right, let's look at some machinery. Right, so we've spoken oh. about... What are we working with? So we've spoken about the different styles of drag race, and today we're just going to talk about no prep. Because this is something that you can walk into most hobby shops in Australia, yep. and you can buy a no prep drag racing car. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Um, the three um, main ones that you're going to get ready to run, you'll get a DR10 from Associated. Yep. A lossy 22s camaro yep. and i think there's also a uh, um, like a ford f100 um and then you can get a traxxas drag, drag slash yep. as well so they're the ones that you're going to be able to buy now this here started life out as a dr10 yep um i actually raced this car in a particular class that we have mm -hmm. um which we'll talk about um but yeah I, I like this because as far as i'm concerned it's a muscle car mm. this is this is um there's a guy called uh, sean ellington otherwise known as murder nova on the Street Outlaws show, and this is a style of car that he races in his style of events. Yep. Right. Uh, one thing you'll notice with this car, if you can see here, is we've got a, a full rear bumper. Yep. Oh, yes. Right? And a little wing on it. This is a Proline body, a Chevy Nova body. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this style of car is a um, what we call a rear motor car. So anyone that's raced buggies will remember we used to have rear motor buggies. Yes. Yep. And then, I don't know when, 2015 or something, we all switched over to mid-motor buggies. How about, we could have a look at the top camera there. All right, so this is the anatomy of a basic car. Um, this particular car has obviously quite a few upgrades on it, one of them being a carbon fiber chassis. Yep. Um, now, a carbon fiber chassis isn't something that you really need to worry about for this style of car. Mm -hmm. um, I just happen to have one, so I put it on because it's better than being on a shelf. Yep. Um, comes with a tub style chassis. Um, it's pretty straightforward. But everything else in this car is the same. So we've got factory front geometry, yep. factory transmission and setup and everything like that. So this transmission, this would be off like a... Stealth. It's a stealth type, is it? That's what's well, a DR10 transmission. Right, okay. So it's a, the same... The, the three gear. Yeah, so it's actually the same transmission that you would find in a B5 M3 gear yes. or a B5. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and do they have ball diffs or gear diffs? Gear diffs. Gear diffs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, fluid filled or just open? No, fluid filled. Fluid filled. Um, you ask two drag racers whether they like a thick oil or a thin oil, and you'll get two answers. Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, this I obviously have quite a loose diff. Mm. Yeah. And I'll tell you my, what my theory is. Yep. Right? So if we're drag racing. Yep. And I've got a lock diff. Yes. If one wheel loses power, yes, that will then get driven. That's right. Or it will okay? change its direction. Because that will stop providing traction in this wheel. Yes. Whereas the theory is if you have a loose diff, yes. this will just spin and the car will go straight and it will go out of that low traction patch. Yep. yep. Right. But other people have a theory which is if you get to there, that can start spinning. That spins so fast yes. that the car diffs out. Yes. So yep. this is spinning and this stops spinning and you yes. lose all power and the car just yes. flips over and crashes. So yes. You know, it's one of the th uh, uh, that comes to the joy of these sorts of things, mm. right? Which is working out how to do it yourself. What yeah. What do you like? How does your car like? And that sort of thing. Yeah. So tell us about the the mo the, just two S. So yep. seven point four volts. Yep. Yeah. Well, the standard for these eight point four four is the oh, yeah. maximum voltage you're allowed. Yeah. Okay. So two yep. S so standard two S lipo. Um, we run. I'll, I'll grab a, a a lipo out of the bag to yeah. give you an idea. Because they're like square bricks, I think. They're like shorties, but tall. What do you call me? So, Shorty, but tall. Oh, gee, look oh, at like that. Look at that. <laughs> so we've got, I've got two different packs here. Yep. These are drag racing specific packs. Yeah. Um, yep. So this here is a, I'm going to say your entry level drag racing pack. Yeah. Okay. So under $200, yep. um, 400C burst. Um, it's quite a substantial pack. Yep. Um, it's good. Fits in the car. And that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. And and that's sort of all you need. Now this car has a Tekken RS Pro Speed controller mm -hmm. and a Tekken two pole, I think like a five turn motor in it. Yep. Um, it's it, it doesn't need anything particularly fancy in it. It's not designed to be the fastest car in the world. Yep. It's designed to run with the Nova body to look badass and be a fun car to run down the track. So, yeah. in, so in this class of racing, there's no restriction on the motor you can put in. So the restrictions, it's got to be a one-tenth style. So right. 550 or 540. Yep. Okay? okay. So you can run a 550 motor. When we look at one of the other um, more up spec cars, you'll see the 550 style motor. Right. This car with the um, – do you want to grab that Nova body for me? Yep. Just quickly. I'll show you this quickly. So this car with the Nova body, yep. right, 
is what we run in what's called Pro Street. Okay. Yep. So ignore the carbon fiber chassis because that's kind of just me being me. Yep. But this sort of car here is very similar to a car that you can buy a DR10, a Lossy 22S, yes. or a um, Traxxas, and then you can come and race this car. And you don't have to worry about getting whomped by fast guys. Yeah. Okay. Right. But it gives you the ability in this class yes. that you can upgrade your motor and speed controller and still stay in the same class yes. until you're ready to get in with the big boys. Right. Okay. Okay. Now we'll talk about um, we'll talk about the other car before we talk about the main differences between the two, I think, yep. because it'll be easier once you've looked at both the cars to understand what we're talking about when we talk about the differences. Yep. Um, but yeah, so this is a this is a pretty um, this is what we call a dry tire car. And I'll explain what that means in a second. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's get um, the orange car. The orange car. So the orange car is, um, this is my multi-purpose car. This is my, my um, pocket knife. Okay? Your pocket knife. This is my pocket knife. So this car here um, can run in both classes. So I mentioned there are two classes. Mm -hmm. yep. So the first class is what we call Pro Street. Yep. Pro Street. Um, and the second class is called Outlaw. Okay. So this particular body here, it's not a carbon fiber wing. It's just a... Perspex swing with a carbon fiber wrap, but it looks cool and it does the job. Yep. Um, carbon fiber stickers are just as good as the real thing. Oh. I've proven it. I've proven it. Yep. And so. Just as cool. So, right, so this. We'll go again. Yep. Oh, I love the pink wire. That's right. Very, so we that's can see mean. it's got a, a fair bit of difference. Yep. Yeah. So the, the big main difference between this car and the other car is we've got a mid motor setup. Okay. Yep. All right, so everything's been moved forward. Yep. This car then goes above that level because we've got an aftermarket aluminium transmission, yeah, in here as well. Yep. Um, but you know, again, that's sort of me being me. Um, so I call this um, my, my pocket knife, um, yep. because the two classes are effectively a dry tire class yes. and then a prep class, right? Right now, when we're talking about no prep racing, we're only talking about not putting sticky stuff on the track. Okay. Right. We absolutely will put sticky stuff on our tires because it's the only way you can make this car go. This cars go really fast. Right. Right. Um, an example of something um, that we do like this is. Yeah. Um, what have we got? Oh, look, look how many props he's got. Well, this is, this is hey. tacky, isn't it? Well, you know why? They're sweeps, mate. Of course they're going to be tacky. Okay, so we've got this. That's right. goop. It's a little bottle. It is goop, um, but it's a little bit different. So. Um, the 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 dry tire class we will absolutely use tire additives rubber additives and things like that um yep. you know stuff that you guys will sell for your touring car yep. races hmm. to make the rubber stickier yeah yep. okay a really simple one for people to use before you come down here and buy something fancy yep. is wd-40 yeah yeah it's amazing trust me guys spray wd-40 on a rag yep. wipe it onto your tires of your dr10 or your lossy 22s Leave it for five minutes, and you'll be amazed at how much stickier your tires are. Well, we okay? used to use WD-40 in early touring car racing. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Well, I've got a friend who's a professional drag racer, and he said he'd go and spray his actual tires of his car with WD-40 oh, and right. just let it sit the night before, right? Right. Okay. Did it do anything? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you know, that's the sort of stuff that he used to use. Yes. So um, WD-40 is, is handy. It's not as effective as everything else, but it's something yep. you've probably got in your shed that you can try. Yes. Um, so I highly recommend it. Now... Um, so a, a good quality tire conditioner will make the tire nice and rubber, uh, nice and sticky, I should say. Yes. In a dry tire capacity, that's where we stop with what we do to the tire. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what we're effectively doing is we're making the rubber on the tire work at its peak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. When we go, uh, and, and so that's what we consider a dry tire. So it's a dry tire without a sticky additive. Yes. Right. The next step from there is called is prep tire. Yep. Right. And that's where you have a product like this. Yeah. Okay. Which, um, if you can see in the camera, it's so sticky that I can't get the lid open because it's empty. Yeah. Um, but so this is like a glue, right? Yeah. Oh, I've got to open. All right. So the so, pressures of Hollywood. Look, look, I will, we'll be able to put some on here. Yeah. And we'll just let that cure. And then you'll probably see how it works. Right. So that's like a glue. It's, it, it, it's, it's what we call a non curing glue. Right. So, it doesn't, so it stays sticky when it's when it's dry. So it's a bit like a context in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's it's a pressure sensitive adhesive, I think, is the oh, okay. official terminology. Very similar to something that you would use to hold down uh, carpet tiles and rubber tiles. Right. Right. Okay. Um, it's it, yeah, you may have also heard it referred to as VHT, which right. they would use at a proper drag racing track. Yep. So I just put a little bit on here. Yep. Right. 
And so it's not really doing anything at the moment because it hasn't cured off yet. But when it cures... How long do you expect it? Do you, do you, do you cook it in normally or you just let it do, do it naturally? Um, look, that's a great question. When it's about 20 degrees ambient, yep. you just leave it. Right. Right. And so that's that's already starting, oh, starting to... to... Well, I can see it. So it's stringing it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it didn't take long at all. No. So it's designed to flash off very quickly. Right. So that's that's oh, very, wow. very sticky. Well, let me over here. Look at the sticky icky. It's a snooper safe. Yeah, so. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Uh, and how long out. will that last? Like, that's just and one so run. We'll, yeah, yeah. So we, what we'll do is we do a pass with that. So I like to do multiple coats. So I do one coat, let it flash off. Yep. Then do another coat, yep. and then let it flash off. Yep. Um, and then we'll do a pass. The, the, the thing with these cars, right, if you're having trouble trying to get your car down, what we call going down the line, so doing your pass, mm -hmm. it's probably because you're not looking after your tyres. If you think about it, the tyres are the only thing that transfers all of this yes. to the road. Yep. Um, so clean your tyres after every pass. Yes. If you're using prep, yep. we use um, wax and grease remover from Bunnings. Okay. Right? Put some of that onto... Um, I use makeup pads. Right. Right? You get the little cotton pads. I pour some onto there. And I wipe my wheel. It cleans well, like those it. Little, BJ's those got the, plenty of them. It's just in the, 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 co the cotton round ones. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Makeup pads. Like the yeah. Yep. They're perfect. Right? Um, but some people use a rag or you can use whatever you like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're um, not prepping your tires, um, a really good tip is if you have you buy a, um, a doormat. Yep. Right. Right from say Bunnings or something, ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put some water down on the doormat. Right. right. Over the space where your wheels are. Yeah. And you just do a quick little burnout in the water. Yeah. Okay. When I say quick, we're not full power. We're just enough to bother the surface of the tire to agitate yep. it. Right. Right. And there's one step you can go above that, which is um that's the step, huh? what i do hmm. which is simple green how good so, is so, simple so green you're talking about a mat does it matter what material the mat's made out of or how aggressive it is it will matter depending on how you drive your tire i just uh, buy a cheap nylon mat yeah because i'm not really trying to melt anything right right because most people blow up their speed controllers and things yep. doing burnouts really on the yep. mat yeah oh, and just in anywhere they'll, they'll, oh. they'll, they'll try and do a big burnout <laughs> right and the force through that speed controller, there's too much and they right. blow up. Right. Right. You so, won't blow that speed up. No, no, I won't. I've actually I've, I've had this for four meets now and it's been going very, very well. Um, but I was sponsored by another supplier yep. um, for a while and uh, they were very good, don't get me wrong. Yep. But generally, when I blew a speed controller up, it was after doing a burnout and you do the pass mm. and the car came back, it wouldn't work anymore. Right. So, because um, it gets hot and it melts the solder and then the solder will kind of right, it'll be sure. shorting as it does the pass and then oh, okay. eventually it cooks the fits and so on and away you go right right but i digress so um in terms of tires uh, yep. you know the, the 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 easiest way to make your car go fast is by cleaning your tires okay so clean on a mat with water yep. or yep. simple green simple yeah so uh, instead of putting water down on the mat yeah put the simple green down on the mat and do a right. burnout in the yep. simple green okay right that's just concentrated simple green and water in a um Gatorade bottle so we're still in the overhead so let's have a look so this is a 550 motor yes yep. so it's a little bit longer than the 540 yep um we've obviously got some nice decent gauge wire here mm -hmm. 10 gauge looks like yep and then you've got that to an xt90 plug yep. which is very familiar to a lot of people in rc yeah um and then we've got the oe 1.2 speed controller in there yep which is 4S capable. Yeah. Um, massive amounts. That's Let's a new. A look, eh? That is a new offering from Orca. So it's really good. Travis got one of those from us to um, test out and to report back. Um, unfortunately, like you said, we haven't haven't blown it up yet, which is a big thing for drag races. Yeah. So stuff blows up. Stuff does blow up. Like you said, it's really demanding hmm. on the electronics, even though it's only small passes. But when you're running cells like. The one that you've shown me, that's, that's a huge amount of uh, capacity to, to pass current. Well, to put this in perspective, this battery weighs half a kilo. Yeah, yeah. Or more. Absolutely. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's the sort of thing. So th these Orca speed controllers are wonderful. Mm. Uh, the smaller car we looked at, the first car, we had a two-pole motor, okay, a yep. 540. Right. So that's a high RPM style setup. Yep. Whereas this is a four-pole. So... Yep. Whereas the other one might be, say, 9,000 kV. This is 6,500 kV. Right. But it prov provides a lot more torque and it's yep. a lot more efficient. Yeah, right. So we actually, um, whereas in the other car, yes. I may have a 96-tooth spur and a 
16 tooth pinion mm -hmm. and this i have a 96 tooth burr and a 30 tooth pinion right. yeah massive okay. gearing change yeah mm. so we're, we're, we're going from an fdr of about 12 which is yep. your final drive down to in the eights right um and you know the thing with this orca is it will run a four pole and a two pole mm. yeah so you can buy this one esc yeah and you can run it with a straightforward two pole motor and your yep. pro Do you have to change the settings or it just picks it up and goes did you have to change no i didn't change any settings yep. in terms of the pole count for the motor the yep. speed oh, controller okay. worked it out it. Yep. Yep. yeah beautiful um and another thing i like with the orca um you know look it's a plus plus or a minus depending on how you look at it mm -hmm. but it's the ease in which you can program it yep so you have a little box yep. and you have to use the box yep so it's something that you always have with you and you're used to using when you're on the track yeah the other ones sometimes you have to use laptops or phones you've got to connect things and that sort Let's of stuff the front one beach huh? yep so you do so you said yeah like you said you always got your program box with you um and that's how a lot of us race yep in yep. the other classes that we race yeah and you so, can make changes you can add timing and that in these cars you um run turbo and boost and absolutely all those sorts of things yeah yeah we in terms of turbo and boost generally when you get up to the 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 high end the, the ultra um, ultra fast stuff you're running as much turbo and boost as the ESC will give you yeah okay and that's why things blow up yeah right yeah. Uh, a way that we have to to get around this so um a huge problem we used to have was voltage sag yep mm. okay because we've got all of this uh, all these amps coming through you know sometimes 400 400 plus amps coming through this little speed controller yep. and then through a normal touring car battery yep. and then ah uh, you know like various just can't hold up you're dropping down to sort of five and a half volts from eight yep right um, so these came out and these were good, you know, and these, these got you from five and a half to maybe 6.1, 6.2. Yep. yep. And then these sorts of monsters came out. Yep. yep. So, I mean, speaking of it's like, dramatically, that doesn't seem that much bigger. I mean, easily it is bigger. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a 10, bigger, 10, heavy battery. 10,000 mm. milliamp battery. Yeah. Yep, 10,000 right. milliamp. So this is a 5P. Um, what we worked out, mm. um, I want to say we worked out is as you added cells in parallel, you yep. reduce the amp load across those cells. Right. Okay. So a 2S4P battery like this, yep. right, technically works the cells half as hard as a 2S2P battery. Right. Okay. Okay. That's complicated. We can give people more in-depth look at that at another point if they want to know. But right. this is a 2S5P. So right. this has five cells in parallel giving us, um, uh, so it's actually 10 cells. So it's got yep. five pairs. Right. of yeah. cells to yeah. give us um, a better voltage drop so yeah. as we add cells we drop it down but there is diminishing returns so that's why um you know you don't really see people going over kind of six p's and that sort of stuff right? right plus also as you add cells in parallel you add weight yep and weight's a big deal for these cars that's why this is all carbon fiber and so on yeah, yeah. um so this is a simple um prep style car again mm -hmm. um this car works fine with a dry tire or a prep tire which is good yes. how fast does it go um so this car will do a 1.8 second pass at about 80 miles an hour mm. in with prep tires yeah or about a 2.1 second pass at about 70 miles an hour with dry tires so without yeah. the sticky prep on it yeah okay? so it's pretty good now there's one there's there's a car that's quite similar to this but it's the kind of next step up and it's um in terms of complexity i guess is it here it is oh it is let's get the next step. i know I thought I'd. Oh, we got next step coming. I'd next give step. everybody um, a treat. Right. What is this? Oh, All right. Look at this. So I've got Sorian. He's left a comment. He says hello. Hi, Sorian. He said uh, to ask you where that chassis before came from. Oh, that's a great question. Well, here's the same sort of chassis, but on steroids. Right. So, which camera so, are we on? These are uh, can go, Okay, so that's the front camera. Let's go to the um, top. While I've got you, so this is good. So if you have a look at this body here, yeah, you'll see these little plastic braces. Mm -hmm. Okay, stiffeners. Yeah, so these stiffeners are great. If you can see this here, okay, yeah. that's where the tires are rubbing on the body. Yeah, and all of that sucks power, yes. right? So it sucks speed power because it's rubber, you know. Yeah. Um, and the reality is that. Uh, you want to try and avoid that so adding stiffeners and things uh, makes a big difference to the body right so these this chassis is actually made by um, a company in western australia um oh is that unfair it's it's unfair for the people that race against it uh, there yeah you go. it's an unfair rc i don't know if you guys can read that or not but it's ufrc unfair rc 
Razor V2. So that's the name of the chassis. How cool is that? There you go. So I've this... got an unfair car stand somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's Brent, really... Brenton made us a, uh, a car stand, which is fantastic. Yeah. So the first car we looked at was a DR10. Yep. The next two cars are actually team associated B6 point star yep. conversions. Okay. Okay. So this car is basically a team associated B6.2. Yep. Okay. Um, with so the, the gear ratios and all that sort of stuff, right? What we do in terms of a pro car yep. is so we have a carbon chassis. This is a four mil chassis. Obviously, yes. we have a wheelie bar. Yep. Um, we have a front bulkhead that is different. Yep. So we have these two aluminium pieces to create that bulkhead there. Oh, I forgot to ask you before. So the servo is mounted in the center of this particular point. Yep. And it's sort of like a, a pan car. Mm -hmm. type of car yeah. Yeah. So the reason for doing this, this is a direct linkage. The reason for doing this, so yeah. there's a good reason. What do you think yep. it might be? Well, I suppose it has to be direct, no slop. No, it's not that. Good guess, though. There's a weight. It is where you move the weight. Right. So this huge battery here. Yes. Okay. If I put this here. Yep. Or I put this here. Yep. Okay. There is a significant difference to how this car can perform. Right. Okay. Now, this is a prep car. This car generally has to be prepped to work. Right. Yeah. If I'm not prepping the tires, it doesn't generate enough grip in the way that it is. It's set up stiff, so it doesn't shift the weight in the way that the other cars do. Yeah. Yep. Right. But that's because it's stable. Yeah. Right. And you need to launch stability. Yeah. So I want my weight as far forward as I can. Oh, okay. Right? So that's why the servo is out of the way. So if you have a look at this. Yeah. Right. As soon as I put my weight there. Yes. The car sags down yes. and it sits on its bump stops basically. Yes. Okay. And so what that does is it gives me a little bit of weight shift here, yep. which helps with your traction. Yeah. Okay. But having this weight forward stops the front wheels coming off the ground. Yeah. Um, inertia is a wonderful thing. So the cars want to keep going in the direction, uh, things want to move in the direction they're moving in. Yep. So if your first motion is this, yep. the car wants to keep doing that. Right. Okay. If your first motion is this, yep. the car wants to keep going forward. Right. So being able to put the weight there versus if you had the servo where it was in its stock position. Yes. You could only put it there. Yeah, okay. gives you a big, big, big help. Um, and in terms of the dry tire cars, where you're not using an artificial sticky to hold it to the ground, yeah. The further back you put your weight, yes. the more weight you have over the, the rear tires. Yes. So the increase in traction as well. So on on the base of the chassis, I notice notice all these holes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are these holes usually for mounting of the battery. So. So all these. Yeah. When these were designed, um, there was a theory. Um, uh, yeah, they, they wanted to be able to move battery mounting points up and down. Right. Okay. Right. Problem is, is they're heavy. Yeah. And they're actually unnecessary in yep. turn. When, when you're when you're at this level. Yes. Right. There's nothing on this car that doesn't need to be there. Okay. Okay. Yep. A little plastic thing to hold the battery. Plus, also, you look at the difference between these two batteries. Yes. Okay. They look similar, but they're not. Yep. And so they both won't fit. Yes. On that same chassis. Yeah. So what I do is I use a product. So so these don't have to be there. Yeah. These days. Right. Yep. So you've got this. This Velcro looking stuff on it. Yeah, it's um, this is NASA at its finest. NASA, right? Really? Yep. You have to get it from NASA. No, no, but they oh. they invented it, right? <laughs> or it was invented for them. Right. And this is called Jewel Lock. Right. So it's Velcro, but it's good in terms of uh, Velcro normally has a male and a female a hook yes. and a loop. Yeah. Whereas this, you just get one piece, and that one piece is the same, right? So you only get one roll. You don't have to worry about wasting one or the other. And this just goes on here. Well, I heard you put it on before and I was clicking in the place. Yeah, but this is a lot bigger battery. Right, okay. There we go. All right. So you can get it. A... Now pick that up by the battery. Oh, wow. Well, I'm on the front and you'll see it. It's right. amazing. It's pretty aggressive, isn't it? Yeah. So what's going to happen is the battery, the shrink wrap holding the battery on is yep. going to fail yep. before the, yeah, the yeah. adhesive goes. Oh, okay. So um, there's one thing that I normally do to these. I need that in my life. Where do you get it from? My buggies need that. I'm, I'm going to put that I'm, in my I'm buggies. I'm going to send an email to NASA. I buy it from eBay. From where? eBay. Yeah, from eBay. Oh, eBay. Yeah. eBay. From the NASA shop. eBay. Right. Now. Hello. Got oh. some bandages. Right. Yes, we do. What have we got here? So. What's happened? Batteries like to be warm. Oh. Uh, like to be warm? Uh, they like to be warm. Right. Now, I don't artificially heat batteries. I don't recommend anyone does that. But as you use this battery... The fleecy for the battery, is it? Yeah. Well, it does two things, right? What does it do? So that battery's there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So don't now, tell me, don't tell me you tape it on. Yeah, absolutely. As well. Yep. If you crash, this car will do ninety miles an hour. Yeah. If that battery gets ejected. Yep. 
it will pull the speed control, ripple the wires out, and Explode. everything. It's just well, you know, exploding is one thing, but just ripping the poles out from the solder joints on the speed controller is not fun. It's a bit ugly, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's you know, it's a great way to ruin a four hundred dollar speed controller, three hundred dollar speed controller. But this this is good because this is the stuff that sticks to itself. So if we put that on here, right. what, what is this? Is this a heat wrap or something? It's what is a bandage or what is well, it? Anyone that plays sport sport that would know what this is. I've no idea. I don't play sport. Right now, if I had scissors here, which I didn't bring with me, I could cut that, and that stuck. So peel that off now. Right, it's stuck in place. Oh, so it releases fairly easily. Yeah. When you want to, want to take it off. Yeah. But it's that. careful. I'm not allowed to shutting things. That's that's facing me. All right. All right. And okay, so, so that's on, right? Yeah, I buy this from Woolworths. It's ten dollars for a ten meter roll. And oh, that, so now that battery won't come off. And you can put more of this on, and it will help insulate the heat as well. I'm giving away all the secrets here, guys. You got to be paying attention. All right, this battery at uh, 35 degrees Celsius, yeah, is probably going to give you 20% more power than at 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, okay, all right. And so, you know, that's more these, power. The way, look, you know, these things we this car will use all the power I give it. Well, there's all, right? all there's always been that talk about batteries and all the chemical works better with some heat in it. Now, even earlier days, we used to warm up batteries and stuff, and there's battery warmers around, aren't there? The, the theory is, is that it's crystalline. And yeah. as you heat it up, it becomes liquid. Right. And as it's liquid, you get free ions and electrons in solution, yes. yep. which makes it easier for it to transmit energy. Right. Um, now, heating up batteries is really dangerous, so I don't recommend anyone artificially heats up their batteries. Yep. But through using the battery, yep. internal friction, resistance, and things will heat it up for you. Even charging, and this, right? Yep, and this will keep it warm. Right. All right. So I have a little charger that's about this big. Yep. I, when I'm racing, I yep. will charge the battery as it is, so it never comes out of the car. Right. How fast right. do you charge it? Um, I charge mine at 20 amps on race day. Okay. Some people like 40. I can do 40, but I, I like 20. It's enough for me. And there's no limit for your racing. You can. You're allowed to charge that. This is this is street. You know, RC car racing. Yeah. We we have outlaws. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cowboys. We we have a, cables. We have a beautiful set of rules outlining the car. Yeah. And then we have a second set of rules outlining how we race. Yep. If it's not covered in those two sets of rules, then yep. you can do it. Yeah. Okay. And trust me, everyone tries. Right. right now that's half the fun here's this little thing here right this is called a gnss performance analyzer this is by a company called sky rc yeah okay there's a few different ones but they're all made in the same factory in china and these this one's branded sky rc now, we sell them here yep we absolutely sell them here these are wonderful little tools so they are they've got an internal battery yep which is usb c usb c power oh, so Contained. Yep, yep. self-contained. Oh. And Bluetooth onto your device. Oh, okay. Commonly referred to as a phone. Let's try and turn it on. And you can the car's not gonna go, is it? No, no, we're not gonna turn the car on. We're not gonna do a burnout on the We're just gonna turn this on. <laughs> Kabang. Right. So I'm gonna push this button. I wanna, I wanna, so if we push this off the I wanna drag race this against I wanna drag race this against bone crusher. So it's talking, is it? Yeah, I'm I, look this. I'm for, this doesn't have a switch, right? So it's always even at, um, when you're not using it, it still drains down. So oh, if, really? you, if you have one of oh. these, you must charge it the night before you go use it. Okay, so it's right? always on standby. Yeah, so uh, this might be flat. It looks flat. like it is flat. It's, flat. Like okay. it's always on. You're always on. Always on. Ready to go. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I can still show you pretty much how this sort of works. So basically, okay. we have this on here. We have an app on our phone. Okay, let's see if I can get in tighter there. Get, get in tight, like, get in tight, get in tight like a tiger. Yep. Let's get a shift that up to about here. I'm going to make sure. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. So. All right. There we go. Oh, look. If you zoom in a little bit. Zoom out a bit. Just a bit, oh, babe. Just a touch. Come on. How's it? How are good night. Uh, right. So in this, I can set all sorts of different parameters. One of the yep. functions is drag racing. Okay. So I select the drag parameter, yep. and then we either have it in metric or imperial, so miles or kilometers. Yes. Almost all drag racing is done in imperial, yep. so we do everything in imperial. Okay. Why is okay. that? Because uh, Americans rule the world. Yep. Okay. And it's easier for you to compute how, how you're doing. Right? That's right. Yep. So we yep. compare. Before drag racing, imperial made no sense to me. Yeah. Now it makes a little bit of sense to me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so we can set it. So we, we race over a scale quarter mile, right? Which yeah. is 132 feet. 
under 36 yeah. feet. Okay. Right. So you might have heard of things like 13, 20, and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's yep. a quarter mile. So right. that's what people drag race over. Yes. So we drag race over um, uh, 132 feet. And so if you have a look at here, we've got mode distance, yep. 132 feet. Yep. Then we have acceleration and G meter. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if I can focus it a bit better. What's up, Jay? This G meter is an algorithm, so take it with a grain of salt. All right. That's and, how many G's it can pull. Yep, that is. Right. Okay. And then as we come down here, so you'll see here we've got a blue line which yep. shows us our speed progression. Yep. Yes. And then we have this orange line which is our calculated G right. progression. Right. Okay. And then we get a we get the information. So this is a dry tire pass. Yes. I don't, I don't want to scare anybody. Wow. Uh, so two point one at seventy six miles an hour. Wow. So that, um, it's actually not here, that car, but this particular car, so from a standing still, yes. a standing stop to 132 feet, which is about 40 meters and 20 centimeters. So let's say 40 meters. So yep. over that distance, yep. it was able to do it in 2.1 seconds from a standing start. And its top speed was 176 miles an hour, which has got to be, what, 115, 120 k's an hour, yeah, somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. Wow. Um, yeah, and it Tip did it all. The X Max wouldn't keep up with that. The X Max? No. Not even oh, I reckon with some F size rockets on it. Yeah. It, it did it all with dry sweeps. Of course it there did. There you go. Sweet okay. tires, huh? So let's talk a little sweet, bit about sweeps. Sweet reds and sweet blacks. So sweep tires are really, really good. There's a company um sweep that manufactures these tires. Sweep's an OEM, isn't it? Yes. So what that means is they make their own stuff. Um, which means that they're able to give us really good things. Yeah. And they brought out these tires, these sweeps. Now there's um there's a tire um, out there that is considered to be the best. Yep. Now, I've heard on good advice that it's made by the same people that make this tire. Right? Okay. No, I'm not confirming that. Okay. Mm. So don't hold me to that. You know, don't go brushing them down. But my understanding is that this is as good a compound as the one in this tire that everyone goes crazy for. Right. Okay. okay. These tires that I'm talking about, people are paying $200 US for a pair. Oh, wow. Really? Okay. And these sweeps are just as good. Too. I right, can right. tell you this other tire. I do yep. have them. Yep. I did a one eight five at eighty two. Uh, eight, sorry, a one eight five at eighty miles an hour. Yep. I put brand new sweet reds on. Yep. yep. These tires, these actual tires here. Yep. In this car. Yep. Right. And I prepped them and I sent it and it did a one eight zero. Okay. At eighty three miles an hour. This is a slightly taller tire than the other one and I picked up three miles an hour. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Up a little bit. And that's that was out of the packet. Yeah. Okay. So these, I think they're, what, $65 a pair here or something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Man, like, honestly, if you can't get your, like, these are belted and everything. I, I cannot talk highly enough about these sweep tires. Um, there's quite a few people that sell them in Australia. So um, obviously you can buy them here um, or you can buy them from other people. Um, well, we're um, the, the agent and importer into Australia. So if we don't have them, check out your local hobby shop. Yeah, a question here. Yeah. Anthony, what's Anthony. Know how long do the tires last? You know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask that because I've never blown a pair of tires up. I've never really? worn through a pair of tires. Oh, there you go. Right? But there, there is things to consider. And this is a good example. Yeah. Can, I, are we, yep. oh, can we go to the top view? Top. I can see that you've, right. like you've damaged it. You've crashed uh, it at some we, point. We're probably going to have to. Uh, you want me to pull yeah. it out of it? Can, can, you, just, can you guys see this? Just the tip. <laughs> can you go. see the, the sidewall on this tire? Yep. Right? See these wear marks on there? Yep. Now, the sidewall is not belted yep. or right. protected. Yep. So if you pass me that body, the blue one. That's where you were rubbing on it. That's oh, where it? it was rubbing. Oh, it? right? oh. It's both. Right. Ah. So this body, uh, I don't know if this is going to work for you guys. It might be a bit no, tight. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So but, what, but the end of the body is rubbing against here, yeah, right? Right. And so what that does is that wears that away. But right. there's also something that also <laughs> happens. And it's people who steer their car yep. when they're trying to make a pass. What happens? Is the sidewall, um, maybe if we go to the front camera. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, hang on. Let me take it out of here. No, the front camera. What the front camera? camera? Front okay. camera. Front camera. Oh, front camera. There yeah, we go. There we go. Right. Um, if you, can you see the tire, as we as we turn, it's folding under the wheel? Yes. Okay? Yep, yep. And so if you're steering this car yep. under all sorts of force and stress, yep. trying to do a pass, and you're steering it, yep. what can happen is then the sidewall can come and run under the car yeah so that's when these can fail yep. you're more likely to rip a tire open yeah and off. either rip right. a belt or something than you are to actually wear it out um uh, okay so look i would say in terms of passes you should get 250 passes out of a tire before mm. it wears out right. you're going to wear out cars before you wear out tires yeah you, you, you're going to want to try something else before you 
And the inserts. What's the go with the inserts? Well, these are special inserts. These are special ones, are they? Okay. Yes. These, these are special inserts that were given to me by Mr. Sweet. Oh, okay. Oh, so these, right. are these are the prototype ones. ones. Yep. Right. That I put in this car. So I put the prototype foams in, yep. and then yep. brand new tires. Yes. Put it down. Car did the fastest pass ever. Wow. Yep. Right on the street. So, right. um, in terms of foams, there's you need to consider some things because you've got soft foams, you've got hard foams, yes. medium foams, you've got closed cell and open cell foams. Yes. I prefer for a prep car. Yep. Okay. Where you've got a lot of force going through these, I prefer a medium foam. Right. An open foam, a medium open foam. Okay. Okay. And, and don't be afraid and, to cut them. And the foam is like the air pressure inside of your yes. your car tire, your family yep. car tire, your one to one yep. car tire. Yep. So by altering the insert, yep. um, it's like changing the air pressure yep. and how the tire or the contact patch behaves. Theoretically, the softer the foam, mm -hmm. the more grip you have. Yep. But if you have a soft tire and a soft foam, you can actually have it that the, the, the wheel sticks to the ground yep. and it stretches the tire and then it comes up and you get this fluttering uh, noise that you can hear. And that just creates wobble and an instability. Yep. So to fix that, you run a slightly stiffer foam. Right. Um, so if you're running your prep car, you might hear it go. Yep. And that's because the tire is too, the foam is too and soft. And I suppose the other way is because the wheel can actually like stretch and deform and then the, the wheel will bottom out. No? Absolutely. And then you'll yep. be running on plastic, which will if, unload. If the yep. wheel bottoms out, yep. it's all over. All over. Yeah, if that plastic, it. if the plastic, if it, if it compresses, incre compresses so hard that the plastic hits the ground, you yep. get an infinite spring rate and your traction, everything's done. Right. Right. So, you, you know, if you're launching your car. Um, I think we need to go down there one day to this club beach and check it out. I think so. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Go down well, and check it out one day. I'll, we'll talk about that just quickly because there is yes. something coming up that I think is going to be quite exciting okay. for everybody. Okay. But there's one main thing on this car that mm. differentiates it from the one that we just looked at which i said is the jack of all trades yeah what do you guys think that is or what do you notice potentially that the, the viewers might not have noticed about it um well I, I sort of well i realized that it's got like floating body mount oh that's a very keen observation absolutely is that it is it yeah that's the floating uh, body mount system that's a floating body mount system which we're quite synonymous with eight scale pan cars yep. and anything that really relies on even back our old 10 scale nitro cars used to have it where the the rear body post would be mounted to the hubs. Well, maybe we can demonstrate it. Same on the sideways, front. Yeah, yeah that's probably so, a good guess, example. And that we, way, the aerodynamics are acting directly on the you wheel. See how the front body mount is actually moving with the suspension movement there. Then on the rear, the rear should be the same. Do you want to grab any one of those other two cars, and we can actually give a side by side comparison of the two? Yeah. Um, how handy is it having these wheelie bars? It's like a carry handle. Yeah, well, that's how I brought them over. Um, so as the suspension moves on this car, yeah. Yeah. these body posts here yeah. don't move. Yeah, yeah, okay? there, yeah. Right? As this moves, the body post moves. Yeah. Right. Okay. But alternatively, um, yeah. let's go to the front. Yep. Alternatively, what we see here is when I'm putting pressure down on these, yeah. it the body, the suspension's not compressing. Yeah, okay. So the, the aerodynamics tank. of the body is going straight into the chassis, oh, straight yeah. to the yep. tires. And that does two things. One, obviously, it gives you grip, yes. but it stops the chassis. It, it doesn't interfere with the way your shocks work. Oh, uh, yes. So I have this car set up so that the front will be low, and then it will slightly rise like this. It'll rock yep. as it goes through. But you look, the body stays exactly the same. Yes. Okay. okay. And as the uh, wind pressure comes, yep. it doesn't force the front down. And yes. then change the geometry of the front end as well. Okay. Because it, this is a direct um, link. So there's yes. always going to be an element of bumps there and these sorts of things to it. Yep. It can be gained uh, that yes. you can't really avoid. So I do my best to minimize it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's almost a 30 minute video just on how to get yeah, that yeah. sorted. Um, but that's the sort of thing there. Whereas if we look at this car here, yep. um, right, the body just moves. So if I push yeah. down on the body, Yes. the whole car comes down as well right um and that affects your ride heights and all these sorts of things as well yeah, that's right? fantastic well um, well they, these are all made by um unfair rc and wa so i had a question here from david malia he wanted to know what was the model of the orca sleep controller that's the orca oe 1.2 the orca oe 1.2 yeah and that will go 2s 4s so you can yep. use it in 10 scale applications too you can use it in an eight scale yep um, buggy and that will be for censored motors so it's all for censored motors but can run two pole four pole 
and I think it's rated to 400, 400 amps per channel per, per phase. But yeah, insane. So it's just like a, it's got the same software and all the tuning factors of an OE1, yep. but it's all beefed up like 50%. And with this, I'm just running the factory cat pack. I haven't bothered with anything particularly yep. fancy. It, it all works great. That's what we like to hear. Um, I'm running a switch though. Um, Did you put the switch on? Yeah. Whereas um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the switch, but when you've got the body on and everything, it's a lot of pain stuffing around plugging batteries in and oh, out. Okay. So, so you're in there. yeah. Off you go. Now, so I use this XT90. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's one above this called a QS8. Oh, is it? QS8. Which is an 8 mil plug. Right. Ooh. Personally, it's too much. Yeah. I can't pull them apart. Wow. It's a real pain. Yeah. So I run this. I would much rather run, say, a 6.5 mil bullet. Yeah. I think that's actually ideal for this. And I may do that in the future. Yeah. But this is easy and safe. So sure. that's kind of why I run this system. I mean, they've actually got some 8 gauge wiring. We did. Hey, just for you. 8 yeah, gauge. Perfect. Hey, that's it. you can solder of, it for me. It's like the size of my little finger. XC90s are, are great. I mean, any of the XT series, I'm quite impressed with them because they've yeah. got a really um, pronounced fit. Yep. They yeah. fit really well. They yeah, I've never had go, one come loose. They only no. go one way. And, and they're, they're very easy to replace. They're nice to it. solder and work yeah. on. That's the, for me, that's the Bone Crush is going to get some soon. Bone Crusher. Bone Crush is going to get some XT90s. <laughs> the, um, I think, so these are like four and a half mil. And I think that uh, AC, IC fives are like five mil or five oh. and a half mil. Right. And have a slightly higher capacity. Right. But you can't reuse them. Yep. And that's just a pain for me because yes. when you're moving things around, especially in this, yeah, I right. like being able to reuse my plug. So I do like the XT90. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Um, no, so how do you find us? How do you find all these sorts of things? Well, yeah. Western Australia have a club. Right. Queensland have a club. Yep. Okay. Right. We have two clubs. Right. Okay, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and New South Wales have a club as well. Okay. Okay. So most of the major areas do have a club. Um the easiest way to find these people, guys, is using Facebook. Yep. Right. Facebook search as your friend. Put in their no prep drag racing um, and put in your state or your city and something mm -hmm. will come up. Okay. Ours is NPRC, no prep drag racing, right. Melbourne Vic. So if you right. put that in, you'll find it. Okay, okay. easy. And the second, uh, and that, that's for the no prep. This is for this sort of stuff yep. where you've got, um, you know, which is more casual. Um, and you guys run out of knocks? Yeah, so we run at Knox. We also sometimes run at Thomastown. Sometimes yep. we run in um, Ajax um, in Altona. So we do run Altona. because because we're not yep. we don't have to have a designated track because we're not yep. prepping or anything. We do move around a little bit, but probably two out of three, four out of five times we're in Knox. Yeah, right. Okay. Now we race the first Sunday of every month. First Sunday. Keep That's it easy to remember. Yep. yep. Nine a.m. First Sunday of every month. You check out at the page and it will tell you what's happening. Beautiful. Right. All right. And the second club is called the VRC DRA. 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 Victorian RC Drag Racing Association. Okay. That's the track based group. Yep. They race at Knox at the CFA training track. Right. Yep. So it's a designated area. Right. The area is sprayed with sugar water, very similar to um, okay. a normal drag racing track. There you'll see these cars racing. So mm -hmm. if you've got one of these, you can race it. Yep. But they also have a DYO class where you can run any kind of car there um, generally. Yep. Um, and then they've got Top Fuel, which is your 30 inch. Dragsters, yep. which, you know, so I was saying this car does 1.8, so they do 1.2s. Okay. Wow. Right? Yep. Um, and all sorts of manner of things in between. The guys are really good. Um, they have the state titles coming up. How cool is that? States, so you win trophies. Wow. You want to win some trophies? You want to um, do some drag racing? Or you want to come check it out? You want to have some fun? Mm. It's the third Sunday in May. Head to uh, go to Facebook and put in VRC DRA. Yep. Right? And um, you will find it and you can join the group. And see all a bunch of great guys that are there to talk about that sort of stuff as well. Sounds exciting. Sounds really good. Yeah. I think we should go down and check it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, we want you guys to come down. Um, yeah. Bring something. Race and dry tire. Uh, sorry, race and um, DYO. Um, yeah, share something. Yeah, and go from there. Look at well, something. There's, there's nothing the phaser hasn't done yet. Well, <laughs> nothing I can't do with a the phaser. These, um, there's, there's so much more to talk about with this sort of stuff. Yeah. But mm. it can get diluted. Of course. Mm. Right. So, um, you know, I, I, if people have got some questions, shoot them now because we're here to talk about them and I yes. think we can, um, you know, help people when it comes to it. Yes. Um, but in terms of this sort of stuff, but otherwise, you can always comment on here and Travis will get back and yep. pull them over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think in the description on this, mm. can we put the links to the Facebook pages for the Absolutely. two? Absolutely, we can. Yep. Yep. And we'll yep. put the links to the WA page. Mm -hmm. 
um, the Queensland page, which I yep. said was the QMDRA, yep. um, and the New South Wales page as well. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, and look, if anyone's watching this and you're from, oh, there's a one in Darwin as well. There's a Darwin mm. guys that I see. Right. Um, so if you're from any of those sorts, if you've got your own little club with a yeah. couple of mates and you yes. want more people to come down, yes. leave a comment saying, hey, guys, we're in blah, blah. We want a party. Let's, you know, let's catch up. Let's go. Um, mm. And, you know, it's about having fun. Of course um, it is. All RC, else. all this stuff that we do, whatever discipline, mm. so to speak, that we race or we play with, it's all for fun. Mm. Yeah. It just depends what you like. Obviously, you've got to enjoy the content and your enthusiasm or pa passion will take over. Look, I think one thing we should probably talk about Ooh. is cost. Mm -hmm. These sorts of things, so people yes. understand nah, what they might be cost doesn't for. matter. <laughs> you can't put a price on happiness, Travis. That's right. Um, um, if you have a, if you're buying a stock car, yep, a DR10, something like that. Mm -hmm. Look, be prepared to spend about eight hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Okay. By the time you get the car, battery, and mm -hmm. charger right. and stuff, right? Okay, about eight hundred dollars and some sweeps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you gotta have sweeps. Otherwise, you just don't. Know. You know, and then and then when you <laughs> realize that it's really slow and boring yes. because it's ready to run, you yes. get your orcas. That's right. Yes. All right. Um, and then to go up to something like this, mm -hmm. okay, so this is... Um, Full house. Yeah, look, so this doesn't have the floating body mounts or anything mm -hmm. like that, but something like this is probably about $1,200. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and then uh, some of the higher end stuff with the big batteries and all yeah. that sort of stuff, you're probably looking at about $2,000. Yeah. Okay. But you don't have to spend it at once. No. You know, no. you can upgrade and buy bits and pieces, which is the joy of the two classes we run. Yes, so the dry tire class... Yes. you can run your stock lossy 22 um s yes. in fact the last um it's not the last meet but the two last drag days before that a mm -hmm. stock lossy 22 s1 right drag fuchsius drag fuchsius <laughs> says <laughs> drag fuchsius says to finish first yes first you must finish and it's not about how much power you've got it's about how much power you can use oh mm. right so mm. You don't have to have the best of everything. You just have to have your car power set up. Power is nothing without control. Exactly. With great power comes great responsibility. I've got no control or responsibility. And I can vouch for that. Thank you very much, Travis. You have That's done really amazing things for us. You've enlightened us heaps. Learned a lot. Um, yeah, I hope, a lot. I hope people have got to see some stuff like this. Some stuff you just don't see every day. No, That's right. right. But as a just a an RC Nuffy, which is what I am, hmm. I, I love this sort of thing, you know. Oh, this, it, it's, that's what gets you out of bed early on a Sunday morning. Well, yeah. it, it, this, the, these cars are dual purpose, right? Yeah. You can get a couple of DR10s and you can drag race in the driveway with your kids. Yeah. You know, you can go down to the park, you can go to a school or something like that and have heaps of fun without ever bothering with competition. Yeah, okay? yeah that's right. Or you can buy that, you can play with your mates, but then you can actually go and race. So you can actually join a group. Yeah. So, yes, you can hang out by yourself and play with your car and learn it, but yes. you can also... Um, drag race with a bunch of people who yeah. are super friendly and all want to make you go fast yes. um, as well. Plus also, you know, if you like upgrading things, well, mm. don't we all like you know, to upgrade? You know, then this is a, a very, very fun um, yeah, way fun. To, to go because, sure. yeah, the the aftermarket is just insane for all these sorts yeah. of things, all right? And it's all custom. And a lot of it comes from here in Australia at mm. Unfair RC. Yeah, Unfair yeah, RC. Awesome. Yeah, go, go to Facebook, look for the Unfair RC Drivers Group and join yeah. it. And then say, Brenton, give me some cool stuff. Yeah. yeah you know, right. well, what are you working on? We want to see it. Mm. Um, and so he'll help. Um, there's one thing we should probably talk about, which is that body there before mm. we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Let's have a chat about this. Right. Um, this is something that young Surian bestowed, bestowed upon us the other week, and I didn't know a lot about it. Right. So um, one of the beautiful things of Hearns is that they have these wonderful bitty bodies. Mm. We do. Okay. So Betty, uh, where are they? Italian? Italian. Italian. Right. And they make a huge, uh, like, so So they do, they do all of the um, race stuff, touring cars and that sort yep. of thing, right? Buggies. But now, in the last sort of five, four, four years or so, they've, mm. they've gone out. So you can buy the one-seventh scale and fraction style yep. bodies, yes. the one-eighth scale GT bodies, yep. and you can buy the no prep bodies. I think they've got mm. four or five of them now. Yep. Um, and this body is awesome. It's particularly aerodynamic. Yep. You can see that there's no... Um, rear bumper. Yeah. Okay. So That's it's, way to go fast. it's what we call a pro mod style body. Pro mod. Because pro mods don't have rear bumpers. Yeah. All right. Um, and it, you know, it's just a really, really good looking body. And this one's special. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, if we, where are we looking up? Are we up top? Yeah. Let's go up top. What do I do then? Let's have a bird's eye view. Oh. oh. So. Are we on? We're on. <laughs> so guys, if you have a look here, you'll see the signature. Yep. Yeah. The keen among you will see that that's Ryan Martin's signature. It is. Right. 
Now, who here knows who Ryan Martin is? He's an American guy that came over for the Outlaw Challenge thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ryan Martin drives the Fireball Camaro. Fireball. The Fireball Camaro, which right. is um, arguably one of the fastest. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's up there with the fastest um, street racing car in America and the world. Mm. And he was kind enough to come over here and race. Um, saw in and all of his... Um, Cohorts? Yeah, and his... his, his <laughs> Um, beautiful talents, was able to paint up this body, and this body is a replica of Ryan Martin's actual car. Yeah. Um, and he got Ryan Martin to sign the bloody thing. Yeah, he did, he did. Which is rad. Um, and he also did a couple of other ones. We did the Murder Nova, which is like the silver one we saw at the start. Yes. Right. Um, and then there's the Pontiac GTO, which you guys would know as a Monaro. Yes. Um, which was Steve Lutz's vehicle. So he got them all signed, and um, it's all very, very exciting. Um, but it's, it's, this is this is really beautiful. Um, so if you guys want some good drag racing bodies, there's a Viper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, there's this. Oh, it's not. A, it's a VPR. Mm. Right? No, no, the VPR is different. This is a ZR21. No, yeah. So this is a ZR21. Then there's there's a VPR. Yep. There's an M550. Yep. And is there another one? I don't know. There probably is. Right. I've forgotten. <laughs> so um, there's yeah. there's at least three yeah. that I can think of off the top of my head. So this is a body you can use mm. to do 1.8 second passes. Wow. Right. Um, and if you want one that's got a rear bumper on it, remember for our other class, something like the Viper or the M550, which have rear bumpers, right. work perfectly for those sorts of classes yeah. as right. well. So from Hearns, get your Orca ESC. They're, mm -hmm. they're perfect. I love them. Um, get your sweep tires. You can't buy better tires. Mm -hmm. um, and get your bitty bodies. Look at this guy. flying the flag hard. I love it. Always impressive how they've been able to stiffen these. Without stiffening them. Without any stiffness. That's right. They're really, really stiff, aren't they? Yeah. The only thing that we do with those sorts of uh, bodies is we, we run a brace from here to here. Yeah. Right. Okay. And it stops the size from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that tries to limit the amount that they hit your tires and so on. Yeah. Right. Okay. And this does have another piece here that's that's missing or something. That's yeah, the splitter. Or something in a splitter. Oh, okay. It was taken yes. off to avoid avoid me from losing it. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, well there you go. send that back to him next week. He's probably missing it. Yeah, he probably is. Thank you very much, Travis. No problem. That was really informative, and I've learned a heap, and it's made me want to live want to live life forty meters at a time.